when you're looking at this, when you're you're looking at the history of this document, who came up with that? Well, you had a committee of five people, including John Adams and Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson, being well known as a amazing writer, and he was, he was given the task of writing down the rough draft. And when he did, it was the committee of five that kind of looked over it, tweaked it, made some edits here or there. But the original draft that the final Declaration of Independence that we're all familiar with, the original draft came from Jefferson and Jefferson alone. It was just him. There was nobody else that had any input. The committee came up with the declaration that we're now familiar with after, you know, making some tweaks here and there and that kind of thing. And and there were several different different uh, there were several several different contrasts that you're going to notice when I read this. This is Jefferson's rough draft. This is not from the mind of anybody else. This wasn't formed in a committee or debated. This is just what Jefferson believes. And so you'll notice that there are a, a handful of contrasts. Some are basically just wording that they made it a little more concise. And then some of them are actually a pretty significant departure from the original Declaration of Independence. All the same sentiment and principles are there, but they're a little bit more fleshed out in this version of the Declaration of Independence. So here it goes. A declaration of the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for a people to advance from that subordination in which they have hitherto remained, and to assume among the powers of the earth the equal and independent station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to, to the change. We hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable, that all men are created equal and independent, that from that equal creation they derive rights inherent and inalienable, among which are the preservation of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these ends, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government shall become destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves in abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations began at a distinguished period and pursuing invariably the same object evidences designed to subject them to arbitrary power, it is their right it is their duty to throw off such government and provide to provide new guards for their future security, such as has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the, ne the necessity which constrains them to expunge their former systems of government. The history of this present majesty is a history of unremitting injuries and usurpations among which no one fact stands single or solitary to contradict the uniform tenor of rest, all of which have in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world for the truth of which we pledge a faith yet unsullied by falsehood. He has refused his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has neglected utterly to attend them to them. 
he has refused to pass other laws for accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish their right of representation, a right inestimable to them, formidable to tyrants alone. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly and continually for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long space of time to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of an, an annihilation have returned to people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to present to prevent the population of these states, for that purpose obstructing the laws and naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrants hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has suffered the administration of justice totally to cease in some of these colonies, refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made our judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and amount of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices by self-assumed power and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out of their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies and ships of war. He has effected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject, uh, subject us to jurisdiction foreign to our constitutions and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their pretended acts of legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by mock trial from punishment, for any murders they should commit on the inhabit, uh, inhabitations of these states, inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us of the beliefs, uh, the benefits of a trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretend offenses for taking away our charters and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here, withdrawing his governors and declaring us out of his allegiance and protection. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coast, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at time, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny, already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has endeavored to bring the inhabitants, our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is undistinguished and destruction for all ages, sexes, and conditions of existence. He has, incited, he has incited treasonable insurrections in our fellow subjects, with the allurements of forfeiture and confiscation of our property. He has waged cruel war against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. This practical warfare, the opprobrium of infidel powers, is warfare of the Christian king of Great Britain, determined to keep an open market where men should be bought and sold. He has prostituted his negative for suppressing every legislative attempt to prohibit or restrain this execrable commerce. And this assemblage of horrors might want no fact of distinguished die. He is now exciting those very people to rise in arms against us and to purchase that liberty of which he has deprived them and murdering people upon whom he also obtruded them 
thus paying off the former crimes committed against the liberties of one people with crimes which he urges them to commit against the lives of another. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petition for redress, the most humble terms, our repeated petitions have, a, have been answered repeated injury, a prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be ruler of a people who mean to be free. Future ages will scarce believe that the hardiness of one man adventured within the short compass of the twelve years only on so many acts of tyranny without a mask over a people fostered and fixed in principles of liberty. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend jurisdiction over these, our states. We have reminded them that the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here, no one of which could have warrant so strange a partition, the, that these were effected at the expense of our own blood and treasure, unassisted by the wealth or the strength of Great Britain, in that constituting indeed our several forms of government, we had adopted one common king, thereby laying a foundation for perpetual league and amnity with them, but that submission to their parliament was no part of our constitution, nor ever in idea, if history may be credited, and we appealed to their narrative justice and magnanimity, as well to the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which were likely to interrupt our correspondence and connection. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and constantinity, and when, con uh, when occasions have been given them, by the regular course of their laws, of removing from their councils the distributors of our harmony, they have, by their free election, reestablished them in power, and this very time, too, they are permitting their chief magistrate to send over not only soldiers of our common blood, but Scotch and foreign mercenaries to invade and dulge us, delude us in blood. These facts have given the last stab to an agonizing affection, and manly spirits bid us to renounce forever these unfleeting brethren. We must endeavor to forget our former love for them, and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind enemies in war, in peace, friends. We might have been a free and great people together, but a communication of grandeur and of freedom, it seems, is below their dignity. Be it so, since they will have it, the road to glory and happiness is open to us, too. We will climb in it in a separate state and acquiesce in the necessity which pronounces our everlasting adieu. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress, assembled do in the name and by the authority of good people of these states, reject and renounce all allegiance and subjection to the kings of Great Britain and all others may hereafter claim by, though, or under them. We utterly dissolve and break off all political connection, which may have hitherfore, uh, heretofore Subs, uh, subsisted between us and the people of the Parliament of Great Britain. And finally, we do assert and declare these colonies to be free and independent states, and that as free and independent states, they shall hereafter have power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.